Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I am your host, Eric Smith, and today I am talking about Dracula's Return by Charles R. Rutledge with a wonderful cover by Lynn Hansen. She always does fantastic work. Uh, and this is uh, actually two novellas squished together with a bonus short story. Uh, but these were originally published as, let me take a quick look, Dracula's Revenge, and then, I believe it's Dracula's, where is it? Yeah, Dracula's Ghost. Um, and then, and Charles R. Rutledge, uh, did a little editing to sort of just put it all together into one story one novel, and look, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I gave this five out of five on Goodreads. I loved this book. Um, what you have is Detective, let's make sure I have her name correct, Jennifer Grail, and she is called to a homicide location where a body has been drained of blood. And there's two little holes in their neck. And from here, things go crazy. Charles R. Rutledge is just, nobody is safe. There's violence and mayhem and monsters. And things don't let up a lot. It's, it's moving along at a fast pace. Uh, Jennifer Grail... Um, calls up this guy she knows, uh, Carter, I almost said Charles, Carter DeCamp, uh, named after, um, Lynn Carter and, right? It's Lynn Carter and, well, I can't remember. Anyway, a couple of great fantasy authors did stuff with Conan. Um, I could just look. I can't believe that, um... Sprague, L. Sprague de Camp, is that it? Let's see, where is it? I know he mentions it in here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yes, L. Sprague de Camp and Lynn Carter. Uh, anyway, that's that's who Carter de Camp is named after. That's neither here nor there. Uh, but he is. Possibly someone who's lived longer than a normal person should. He was an English professor. He was an Olympic fencer. He's got all these books on the occult. He's a monster hunter, essentially. And so Detective Jennifer Grail teams up with him. They've worked together in the past. And no spoilers, it's Dracula. Um, so this takes a lot if not everything, from at least the first part of the book, really focuses on the Bram Stoker version of Dracula. Uh, from what they're saying in the book, uh, of course, it's one of those things where, oh, it turns out Dracula was a true story. Bram Stoker changed the names and things. But essentially, everything that happened in that book really happened. And Dracula has not been seen since the end of that book. Um, and I should have, I should have grabbed this book that's right over there. Uh, just to show you something really cool because the, the Carter de Camp, I believe it is mentions this Icelandic version of Dracula and it's a real thing. And I just got the book. And it's apparently, I guess there's some um, doubt or there's some debate on whether it's just this Icelandic author ripped off Dracula or, for lack of a better way to put it, or actually if his book is based on a very early draft of Bram Stoker. Like, Bram Stoker took a super early draft, sent it to this guy in Iceland. The guy in Iceland rewrote it-ish, ish, rewrote it-ish, into Icelandic. Um, but 
there are, I guess, a bunch of characters in the Icelandic story that aren't in what we know as the published version of Dracula, and yet uh, some some notes of Bram Stoker's were discovered where he talks about early drafts of his novel, and he talks about those characters. He was going to put these characters in Dracula, ended up not, but they are the characters that are in the Icelandic version. I'm getting way off track here. I just think it's really cool. I'm looking forward to reading this Icelandic version. I'm going to order the book, because you can get the book uh, that has Bram Stoker's notes and stuff. I want to get that too. But anyway, um, so... All of that is to say that this is the Bram Stoker version of Dracula. And uh, let's see. Does it tell us on the back that who else makes an appearance? Um, Well, it doesn't at a quick glance. But I think if you look at this cover, you can see there's another classic uh, monster that's in this book. One of my favorites. Uh, So, what we have here is essentially sort of a police procedural and a monster story because we have Detective Detective Jennifer Grail (coughs) and she's doing police work while Carter DeCamp is doing his thing and they're teaming up. They know that they're fighting monsters, but they're still investigating. they got to find where Dracula is. They have to uh, do this, do that. But it all works. The characters are really entertaining. Um, I like Jennifer Grail. I like Carter DeCamp. He's in a bunch of Charles Rutledge's stuff. They talk about um, another character, Karn, who's this sort of immortal barbarian, I think 12,000 years old, they say. Um, a mortal barbarian character who's a monster hunter who's in a bunch of Charles, excuse me, Charles R. Rutledge's stuff. So, um, I'm sort of gushing because I really, really loved this. Uh, and again, the first part, Dracula's revenge is essentially what that says. Dracula has returned after the events of Bram Stoker's Dracula and wants revenge, and possibly more. And so people are dying. Horrible things are happening. Jennifer Grail, Carter DeCamp, trying to put a stop to it. And then in Dracula's Ghost, we're introduced to, essentially, Carmilla. uh, From the, I'm not sure, Sheridan Lafanu book, Carmilla which I was at Half Price Bookstore looking for a copy, could not find one. There are tons on Amazon. Um, But I want a good copy because I think it's in public domain and anybody can just print up a a copy of it and sell it. So I'm trying to find like uh, an actual, a decent copy of it. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So we have another classic gothic vampire character who predates Dracula, brought into the story. And uh, there are mobsters and drug dealers, um, and as well as the monsters, and more police procedural, more monster hunting, more craziness and graphic violence, though not extreme. This isn't extreme horror. Uh, But again, I love these characters, and... I I hit up Charles R. Rutledge on Twitter. I was like, where can I find all these other stories with Karn? Uh, because I do have, I have other stuff that's got um, Carter DeCamp, possibly Jennifer Grail. Uh, so our, our big story, Dracula's Return, takes up the major portion of this. Again, it's two books squished together into one. And then we have uh, this bonus short story, which is called A Shadow Against the Stars. And according to the author's note, uh, it says, This story originally appeared in the anthology Occult Detective Quarterly Presents. 
but didn't see wide distribution. It's the first published Jennifer Grail adventure, and it features not only Carter DeCamp, but Karn, the immortal barbarian, as well. Since Karn is talked about but not seen in both parts of Dracula's Return, I thought it would be nice to actually have him make an appearance in the book. Plus, this is one of my favorite stories I've written so far. So, Jennifer Grail's first appearance, although it's written um, in that, that, that way that we know she has history, and she has history with other characters, so, you know, she it's, it's, it's the kind of story where uh, it doesn't feel like it's their first story, even though it is, there's, it makes you wonder, where did, where did these people meet? How did, what, what is this little adventure that they're referencing? Um, but it's a very fun story. Again, it starts out as a crime story, turns into a monster story. I'm not going to tell you too much about it. Um, because being a short story, I don't want to give anything away, but we do have the cop, Jennifer Grail, the... Uh, Olympic fencer, English professor, monster hunter, Carter DeCamp, and the immortal barbarian, Karn, who's a very, very interesting character, um, all coming together. And um, even this, it's a great short story. So, <clears throat> as always, I try not to give too much away. So I feel, sometimes I feel like I'm not telling you enough. Um, I, because I'm not telling you enough because I don't want to tell you too much. So, a cop, a monster hunter, Dracula, other creatures, great characters, fast-paced, lots of action, lots of, of history. I love that it's... It's based uh, very much on Bram Stoker's version of Dracula because there were so many different versions, different takes on vampires. And this is very much grounded in the Bram Stoker version and bringing in Carmilla. And um, again, look at the cover. You can see what else is there. <laughs> um, loved it. Five out of five stars on Goodreads. Highly, highly recommended. Uh, this is this is one of those times where I've had this book for a while, and now I'm kicking myself for not having read it sooner. I hope that Charles Rutledge returns to this world. Um, I don't know. I loved it. What else is there to say? All right. Um... That was a bit rambly. Dracula's Return. Charles R. Rutledge. Highly, highly, highly recommended. Great monster book. Um, question for this video. I just recently, on one of my comic book videos, asked people's opinions of vampire stuff. Um... So I'm going to uh, still ask about vampire stuff, but when someone is writing a creature from a very definitive sort of foundation, do you prefer that they stick with that definitive foundation or create their own version? Does this question make sense? Um, so basically, I said a number of times that I love that Charles R. Rutledge went with the Bram Stoker version of Dracula, kept it grounded essentially in Bram Stoker's mythos. And I did. I really, really liked that. Uh, if it's done well and not overused, I'd like to see that. 
But on the other hand, I do like to see what people can do generally with a mythos such as vampires or werewolves or zombies or what have you and how they can put their own spin on it. Sometimes it works very well. The Light at the End by John Skip and Craig Spector, a punk rock vampire novel. Um, sometimes not so much. Twilight. Uh, so I guess I kind of fall in the middle. And as always, my cop out, if it's done well and if it's entertaining, chances are I'm going to enjoy it. So I do, <clears throat> uh, I do like to see an homage to the original material. Um, but I also like to see people with their own take. I suppose maybe I feel a little differently when it comes to Frankenstein's monster because it's, there's just that. It's just Frankenstein's monster. It's the only one. Um, not that uh, there are plenty of good stories where Frankenstein tries to make more or other people take over and make more. But if you're talking about the Frankenstein's monster, um, I guess it depends. I mean, because in the book, he is well-spoken and educated. And so the one thing, as much as I like the Universal Monster movies, I don't like that he's not ed educated and well-spoken. Um, so I think it's a little different there than like when you say vampires, you are talking about a vast array of creatures and the European vampires aren't the same as Asian vampires. And even within Asia, all the vampires aren't the same. I'm not going to lump them all together. Uh, so there are vampire, different vampire legends from all over the world. But if you are talking specifically about Dracula... Uh, I like to see Bram Stoker's version. Um, if you're talking specifically about the Frankenstein monster, I like Mary Shelley's version. But I don't mind a good author, a good story that expands, changes, puts its own spin on things. Does any of this make sense? Or am I just rambling like a crazy man? Let me know, and let me know your thoughts on this whole subject in the comments below. And if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put those in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here at the Low Budget Review Show. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. All the usual YouTube stuff. If you'd care to follow me on other social media, my Twitter is at Ronan5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, is Eric Smith 5757. That's Eric with a K, E R I K S M I T H 5757. That's all I have. This has been the Low Budget Review Show. I have been Eric Smith, and until next time, read more books.